Third game of this weekend series. St. John's taking the first two games, 3-1 and 6-1. So the Bulldogs looking to spoil the sweep. Uh, the Red Storm, St. John's hard luck losers two out of three last weekend against Villanova. They were in position to sweep that series away from the Wildcats, but they dropped the last two games both by a run and, and the defense let them down. Their defense has been steady today as they look for the bats to come alive with 9-1-2 up against left-hander Eric Stout. Stout has allowed a run on two hits. He struck out two in the second as Tyler Sanchez steps in. And Sanchez, first pitch swinging, pops it up. On the infield, the first baseman, Wojciechowski. And there's one away. So at the top of the order, and Alex Caruso coming up. Today for Butler, they do have the majority of their bullpen available. They're not as deep in the bullpen as Steve Farley would like, but they have an excellent closer in Billy Lang. He is hoping to get a deep start today from Stout. His concern has been about the bridge, the middle relief, as it is, I think, for every single baseball coach in America and worldwide. To even add to that, as Caruso takes a call strength. Well, if you have good starting pitches, you don't have to worry about the bridge. If you're the starter, be the finisher. We saw his uh, closer Friday in a 3-1 game for an inning. Nice looking pitcher. Very nice, loose, fastball slider type. 1-1 one, one pitch in there for a strike, 1-2. and two. Well, Stout is capable of going the distance. In this day and age in college baseball, it is more and more of a rarity, particularly for high-end prospects. Stout through two complete games last year. A couple shutouts as Caruso gops this one to right center field, falling fast on a base hit. And it'll go to the wall. Caruso looking up on his way to third. And Caruso is going to make it to third base easily with a triple. Well, he got a hold of that low inside fastball and really turned on it. Good front arm action. Drop, drop that front arm right on the wall. That was a good solid shot. Alex Caruso, a double to center and a triple to center field. He is aboard with one out. You see a strong front arm. He got that bat head through pretty quick. Took it all the way to the wall. And that's a beautiful slide. He pops up three bases. So now Brett Dennis. Butler brings the infield in expecting a bunt. And Stout kneels off the plate. Or I'll even add to that to looking to cut the run off at the plate. Butler plays a lot of halfway defense. They play in a lot. They're not conceding runs. Dennis lays off the 1-0 pitch. So it's a two-ball, no strikeout. Third hit for St. John's. And they look for the equalizer. 2-0 to Dennis, and he got a good pitch, fouling it straight back. He got his pitch right there. Yeah. I don't, I'm pretty sure that Coach Blankbein is going to play contact middle here and with their shortstop in the second baseman. Gotta have good reactions. Take his primary lead as far as the third baseman will give you. And Dennis goes right back up the middle, a base hit to tie the game. Infield in, back, or in the outfield. That one was getting through. It's 2-2. Two -two. Yep. Well, the main thing is Brett Dennis stayed in the middle of the field. That was the key to an RBI. It did sneak through for a hit. I shouldn't say sneak. It was hit, ball, hit the ball pretty hard. But uh, that's the right direction where they hit the baseball there. So Brett Dennis, in his bid to become the everyday DH, drives in his ninth run of the year. He makes his presence felt. You can see why the infield was in there. Good clutch RBI. Now Robert Wayman, with Dennis aboard at first, takes a called strike. So St. John's has tied up the game. And Eric Stout giving up the triple to Caruso. A big hit so far in the inning, and still just one out. And Stout will throw over. St. John's has not had to run much in this series. They've had 18 hits through two games. But on Saturday, they left nine aboard. 
even scoring the six runs. So they've had plenty of opportunities for runs against Butler pitching. They ran a few times, but it was more hit and runs where the ball was in contact. Wayman lifts it to right field. Austin Miller will have it. And able to retreat back to first base is Dennis. So there's two away. And it'll bring up Matt Harris. What I mean by that, so it didn't show up as attempt and stolen bases, but they did try to run, I would say, four or five times so far this weekend. So here is Harris. He cued a single down the third baseline his first time up to drive in a run. There goes Dennis. The pitch swung on and missed. Thrown out to second is off the glove of the shortstop Capone, and Dennis is in there with a stolen base. So the second stolen base of the day today for St. John's through three innings. Well, they're trying to take advantage a little bit of the catcher. Um, I mean, Stout's time isn't too bad. It's uh, you know going to, to home. But they're taking advantage of the arm strength. I mean, game three, your arm isn't as strong as it was Friday night, that's for sure. Harris with another RBI opportunity. Good breaking ball there from Stout, and it's a two strikeout to the junior Matt Harris for St. John's out of India Atlantic, Florida. And a good junior college program, Brevard Community College. His numbers have translated well here to D1 at 294. And the 0-2 pitch as Amador goes out and gets it. Count is one and two, they just corrected that. Is an important pitch for everybody here. Stout will step off. Stout receiving a lot of attention from scouts. This is a big junior year for him being draft eligible. And for a 6'3 lefty that can throw a 90. So scouts in attendance today as he deals low and away. It's 2-2. Two two. Getting a lot of attention. And particularly in this case, you know scouts know that when you need a stopper, like Wade Butler needs today after dropping the first two, this is a good opportunity for him. He'll have a 2-2 pitch coming to Matt Harris. He missed high off the hands, and the count has gone full. What is it my walking? You know, he's going to make sure. What I mean by that is he's, he's going to make sure here that he's pitchers, pitches, up and down the count. 3-2 pitch, and Harris, let's see, the call is no swing. The ball gets away, and advancing the third base is Dennis. So initially the check swing as Harris went about halfway, and it got away from Amador, and that's a wild pitch that will advance Dennis over to third. First walk by Stout. Jared Medeiros here. Coming up, you can see he alertly takes third base. Sets up a first and third situation with two out. And Medeiros grounds one to Shorts. Capone on to second. Butler gets out of the inning. But St. John's able to tie up the game. A run on two hits. They leave two. We head to the fourth in this Big East series finale. 2-2 St. John's and Butler.